Nuclear weapons have held us hostage since 1945, casting a dark shadow over humanity's future. The power to obliterate entire cities, to change the course of history in a flash, rests in the hands of a few. But what if the red button was pushed? Let's find out. Imagine a peaceful morning as you sip your coffee and scroll through the news. Suddenly, a sound blares through your phone's speaker. The alert jolts you, and at the same time, a notification flashes across the screen. A one megaton nuclear bomb has just been detonated at the White House. The sinking feeling intensifies as you realize you're in your suburban kitchen, just 30 miles from the blast. The shockwave races towards you at over 100 miles per hour, and you have only four minutes to react. What do you do? How do you survive? Your choices mean life or death. Within a mile radius of ground zero, a one megaton nuclear explosion would unleash the same forces that occur at the center of a star. In the first microseconds, a fireball would form, reaching temperatures of over 10 million degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than the sun's surface. This heat would vaporize everything in its path, turning buildings, trees, and roads into plasma. The ensuing pressure wave would create winds exceeding 600 miles per hour, strong enough to flatten reinforced concrete structures. It would demolish everything in its wake and turn most objects into deadly projectiles. Tourists strolling along the National Mall would be vaporized, leaving no trace of their existence. At the US Capitol, just 1.5 miles from the blast, the iconic dome would be obliterated. Almost simultaneously, the thermal radiation would unleash a blinding flash of light, causing third-degree burns to anyone unfortunate enough to be within walking distance. Windows would shatter miles away, sending glass shards flying in all directions. An electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, sweeps across the region, disabling electronic devices, crippling communication, and plunging the metro area into darkness. Within two miles of the blast, the heat would be intense enough to cause severe burns. In this zone, the color of your clothes will determine how bad they will be. Dark clothing would absorb more heat and spontaneously ignite. You may even see a burned outline of your clothes on your skin. If you're lucky, you're wearing light-colored clothing, which may reflect enough heat to prevent severe burning. 10 miles away, 85,000 people packed the stands at FedEx Fields, watching the Washington football team play their weekly game. The giant screens begin to flicker and then go dark as the EMP from the blast knocks out electronics. A burst of wind knocks over vendor stalls and sends their contents hurtling into bystanders. Chaos convulses the crowd as they turn to watch the mushroom cloud rise in the distance. At ground zero, the air is filled with lethal radiation, dust and debris. The intense heat ignites fires miles away, creating firestorms that consume entire neighborhoods. The roar of the explosion reverberates through the air, causing permanent hearing damage to those close enough to experience it. The fallout spreads as the mushroom cloud forms, rising miles into the sky. The explosion produces a variety of radioactive isotopes, such as cesium-137, iodine-131, and strontium-90, among others. The wind carries these and contaminates the land and water with radioactive particles. Your heart races as you stand on the deck of your home 30 miles away in Virginia and watch the massive fireball rise in the distance, its glow surreal against the sky. As the shockwave approaches at more than 100 miles per hour, the ground beneath you begins to shake as if the earth itself is trembling. The air is filled with a low, rumbling sound that grows louder with each passing second. 
your instincts kick in and you rush to the basement and stay far away from the windows. You grab a mattress to hide under, bracing for the impact of the shockwave. Then, the moment arrives. You feel the house violently shake as if gripped by an invisible hand. The windows shatter and cracks begin to form on the walls, but your home remains standing. Books fall from their shelves and you hear the distant sound of wailing car alarms. The immediate chaos of the shockwave has passed. The sky is filled with a strange and ominous glow as the mushroom cloud continues to rise and expand over Washington. You hear the sound of emergency sirens blaring in the distance. People are trying to reach loved ones on their phones, but cell phone service is overwhelmed Neighbors are frantically tuning into emergency broadcasts. Everyone is focused on their families and making sure they're safe. People driving pull over, some in panic, others trying to find somewhere, anywhere, to find shelter. Traffic jams begin to form. The initial shock has given way to a grim reality. The air now has a metallic smell, a sign that fallout has reached the area. People are told to stay indoors, keep windows sealed, and wait for further instructions. Although power may be out, you must remember to turn off the air conditioning or any external fans, since that will bring in radioactive air. Emergency services are overwhelmed, and the National Guard has been deployed to assist with rescue and recovery efforts. Hospitals are overflowing with casualties, and makeshift triage centers are being set up in schools and community centers. Water and food are the first things on people's minds, and there are already reports of looting and civil unrest. A day has passed since the unthinkable happened. The sky is hazy, and fallout particles have begun to settle, making the air feel thick and dangerous. People who still own battery-powered radios are glued to them, listening for updates. The government has declared martial law, and curfews are in place. The National Guard is patrolling the streets, but their primary focus is on Washington, leaving suburban areas to fend for themselves. While there's talk of aid coming from other parts of the country, nothing is confirmed. Until now, only the capital area has been targeted suggesting a possible decapitation strike aimed at crippling the U.S. government. All sorts of rumors circulate. Is there an invasion of the homeland? Are we at war? Are we going to hit back? As if on cue, news breaks that the U.S. has launched its counterattacks. But this raises a more unsettling realization. You know what comes next, and you can't run from it. And then, as you feared, new alerts come in. The enemy has launched missiles in response to the U.S. retaliation. The situation has now escalated into all-out nuclear war. As you shelter in your basement, you begin to realize that, yes, you can survive a nuclear bomb. But the bigger question becomes, can you survive a nuclear war? Thanks for joining me on this exploration of the unthinkable. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. But let's keep going and see what it would be like to live in the aftermath of a nuclear war. Click on the video below to watch part two. Until the next time.